Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you three of my best tips for making beats that artists actually want to use. I'll teach you how to make a beat from scratch, and I've got three main tips for you, but you should learn a lot more throughout the video. So let's just get straight into this one. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to set the BPM to like 143. I'm going to build a melody, so I'm just going to use the Noir piano for now. And then if I decide to change it, I will. So my usual process for building melodies is to just start with some chords. For drill, we could use something like... Copy that over, bring this one down. Which is really basic and boring. So maybe I could bring these out instead. Or I could bring this one up. Other thing I could do is just thicken up the bass notes. So shift and click to copy them. So I like the way that sounds, it's a good starting point. I'm gonna press Alt and R just to randomize the velocity. I'm also gonna manually move some of the notes. I just hold Alt and click. That just turns snap to grid off temporarily. When I'm making them more natural, I much prefer the way they sound a bit late rather than too early. I'm just going to cut that off and I'm going to copy it. It's a good starting point and we're making a beat for an artist so I don't want to overcomplicate things. So what I'm going to do now is copy this and to make it less repetitive, I'm going to try and bring down the bass notes and I could just bring them down like four semitones. And then for the last bit of variation, I'm just going to do something different with these notes. So even though it sounds like there's a lot of notes, there's not much changing. So that's not really going to throw the artist off. They could easily catch that rhythm. You know what? Maybe I'll just switch this part up too. Okay, so I'm just adding this effect from Arturia just to give it like an old tape sound. Then I'm just going to cut a few more of the lows out. So about there. Then I'm just adding this Echo Boy preset just to give it a bit of delay while bringing down the mix. Then just some reverb just to give it an environment. Alright cool, so I've got my main instrument. The next thing I want to do is layer it. So I'm just going to find another instrument that complements it. So I found this preset in Analog Lab called Falls and I really like the way the same melody sounds. But in this one, I'm going to get rid of the bottom layer of bass notes. But with this, so they're not fighting for the same space, we're going to pitch it up an octave. And then maybe get rid of these top ones too. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to bring the lows down on this one. About there. Now I'm going to copy the original piano melody, paste it in the third instrument, but with this one, I'm going to take out the chords because we've already kind of filled up that space. And this is just going to be the top melody. Okay, so I like this sound in Analog Lab. It's just some strings. Yeah, there we go. But with the strings and the bells, I want them to sound a bit aged, kind of like the piano. So I'm just going to copy that same Mellow-Fi preset. Okay, so I've got three instruments now. I've got the piano, I've laid that with the bells, then I've got some strings to cover the top line. So this leads me on to tip number one, which is saving space for vocals. You've probably heard this a lot, but trust me, it's so important. There's times where we add tons of layers to our beats and by themselves, they sound sick. But once you've got too many melodies happening, it becomes overbearing for artists and they can't figure out their own melody. You have to start thinking of vocals as instruments, whether it's a rapper or a singer. Every word they say is a note. And if your beat's already full of other instruments, then it's just gonna be too busy. The easiest way to check this is by adding an acapella. So you can use a site like lalal.ai to extract vocals, place them on top of your melody or your beat, and then just see how it sounds. If it sounds too busy, then think about removing one of the melodies. I know that can be hard when we're so proud of everything we make, but sometimes you just have to swallow your pride and think about the end goal, which in this case is getting an artist on your beat. But saving space includes mixing too. Remember that usually a vocal in a mix will sit down the middle. Some ad-libs might be panned left and right, but the main vocals are usually somewhere down the middle. 
title. If they're spread, then it's only usually a little bit. Essentially, that means that when you're listening to a song, you're really just hearing the vocals down the middle. You're not hearing the main vocals pan left and right. So when you're adding different instruments, you might want to think about panning certain sounds so that everything's not forced in one place. Even if artists don't fully understand mixing principles, subconsciously, it's going to be hard for them to find their pocket in the beat. So in this example, we've got some bells and some strings. Maybe I could pan the strings more to the right. The bells can go to the left. And we'll leave the piano just as it is. You can also check things with plugins like Ozone Imager. So if I just pull this up on the piano, you can see the piano is already spread quite wide, whereas a vocal would look something like this. So if the piano was like this, you could spread that so they're not clashing. All right, let's start adding in some drums. I'm gonna go with a different sounding count snare. Maybe this Potions one. And I'm gonna use a MIDI from my Hazy Hi-Hat MIDI's kit. I'll leave a link to that in the description too. There we go. And then maybe just add in some filler notes. Maybe just add three there. And then just add in some more notes at the end. For the snare, we can just start off simple. And from here, we can make it interesting with a few more notes. All right, so I've got the bounce going. Next, I'm going to add the 808, which leads me to tip number two, which is stop trying to impress other producers. Producers aren't the ones rapping on your beat. And I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I'm adding crazy 808 patterns, tons of effects and technical things, which artists don't give a shit about. It's cool if you're doing things just because you like the beat or you're releasing it as an instrumental. But if it's for an artist, nobody cares about the techniques you've used. All they want to do is capture a feeling. They're just going to listen to it, see if they can catch a vibe and they can flow to it. And if they can, then they're probably going to use it. It doesn't mean that you can't use little bits of ear candy to spice up the beat. It just means that you don't need to overdo it. You don't need to impress any other producers with a crazy amount of slides because you're just going to put people off. All right, let's go for the rider right away. Let's get a couple of slides in here. Turn these into slides as well. I'd say at the end of the eight bar, that's where you can go a little bit crazy with the slides. That's kind of expected. Because what I see sometimes is every single space is just full of slides. People think that the more slides they make, the more truly it's going to be, but that's just not the case. All right, the beat's almost done. I just want to add a couple more things just to give it more impact. So one's going to be this stomp, and I'm just going to add this perk in there. I'm also going to pan these. Before I add anything else, I'm going to tell you tip number three, which is click the like and subscribe button to get endless amounts of placements. Obviously, I'm joking, but it would actually mean a lot to me if you do like the videos that I put out for you. Number three is actually making a clear structure. So you want artists to easily be able to spot where the hook is, where the verse is, and any bridges that you add. And you can do that by clearly arranging the beat. There's no set way to arrange a beat, and I'd always encourage people to experiment with it. But for the sake of getting artists on your beats, an easy guide would be to save most of the energy for the hook. A hook usually has the most impact in a song. So that's where the majority of the melodies and drums want to be. It's also where the most high end frequencies usually are. That's because high frequencies are easier for the human ear to hear. So in a way it relates to excitement. And what I mean by that is if you take one of your instruments and pitch it up an octave, it's going to sound a bit more exciting. There's going to be more energy in it because there's more high frequencies. So for example, in the hook, you might want to try and pitch your whole melody up an octave or at least just include the majority of your sounds there. In the verse, you can take things back out and then slowly build it up again. Also, before each major change, you can add things like a transition or a break in the beat. That's just going to let the artist know that something's about to happen, something's about to change. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to split this pattern. Got everything here so I can copy it out a few times. In the intro, I'm just going to keep the piano. So in this intro, I'll take the top line out. Maybe out of the whole thing. And then in this section, I'll take the bells out, the strings, just leave the counter snare, and then maybe some of the eight weights. This eight weight, I can maybe take some out. 
and then just switch up this bit. I'll just drag that across. Then in this section here, I could pretty much have everything, but if I wanted to save some more excitement, then I could just take the strings out. Actually, instead of having a long intro, because it's gonna be for an artist, I just wanna get straight into the hook. So in this case, I'm gonna bring this back, cut that there with the piano. I'll take this second one, cause it's got a counter melody. I can take this out, bring that back. And then with the counter snare, I'm just gonna chop everything until about here. And then to tell the artist that something's about to change, we're gonna add this riser. But I wanna pitch that up. <laughs> Okay, and then just to save more energy, we can take the strings out from the first part of the hook. We could take that second counter snare out too, and we could take out the first kick. Cut this bit here, and I'll take this kick out too. And then just so there's more variation, I'll create a second 8 weight pattern. I know that I'm adding a lot to this pattern and I'm kind of going against what I said, but at the end, I'm going to put an acapella in and if it works, I'll keep it. If not, I'll remove some notes. But yeah, from here, I can just drag this whole thing over. I'll copy these back in to start with and then I'll start taking a few things out. Copy it over one more time. So yeah, we've got another riser after eight bars to tell the eye something else is about to change. And then from here, we're going to drop into the hook so I can take everything back out. And actually, I'll take that same piano bit from the intro so we save the count melody. I will add some kind of switch up, so I'm just pitching it up a couple octaves, and then I've got half time on the piano. So now you can easily tell it's a bridge because everything just dips out. Bring that back too. I actually like the sound of that, so let's try that in the intro too. I change my mind like all the time when I'm making beats, but I think throughout the whole verse, I should have half time on. And for the strings in this section, they can come down an octave because now they won't be clashing with the piano too much. And then from here, I can just copy everything over. Okay, so I've just pulled in an acapella from Central C, and I just want to test a few parts of the beat. So we'll start with a verse. Sat in a band, no watching, snap, weren't good for my mental health. The things that like I see this on a daily basis be on the day. Try this section. Left me on red back then, but look now, I bet they Still works. They used to ask why. Try this one too, because there's more happening. I know they hate that they can't ignore me, I'm all over London town. It's funny to think that I went OT when I was 16 for 100. And then we'll try the hook. It done man wrong, where are they now? Nowhere to be seen. Where they the power's strong, where am I now? I've been in the charts for 18. I wonder what this will sound like. Maybe I just add half time to the whole thing, but then keep the bells in here. Or I could add half time to the bells and we'll see if that works. And then just bring them up an octave. It done man wrong, where are they now? Nowhere to be seen. Where they I think that's the gonna work better. Strong, where am I now? I've been in the charts for 18. So this is what I'm saying. This is why you need to test things with acapellas because I prefer that much more. All right, let's have a listen from the beginning. Okay, so in the intro, just got the piano half timed. Not really a count melody, J apart from this section. And then to the hook. So yeah, just a small change for the bells, but enough to give it more excitement. And the strings too. So this is where everything's happening. And like I said, with these parts, you can easily tell when the switch up's gonna happen. And there's just so much space for vocals on here. So I guess halftime just made all the difference. We've got the alternating eight weight patterns. Let the strings go down all too. Get the riser back there. So yeah, at this point, someone could easily tell that we're kind of leading up to the hook because there's this little pause. The more energy coming back.
So I hope you liked the video and I hope you were feeling the beat. These were my three main tips, but obviously there's a lot more to it. So if you've got any tips yourself to help the community, then let me know in the comments. Just write down your number one tip for making beats that artists want to use. But if you want to learn way more about making drill beats, mixing and even marketing, then just click the link in the description. But for now, much love for watching the video once again, and I'll see you next time.